Hello, my name is Douglas Taylor and um, I'm here at the Conscious Life Expo. I'm showing some of my paintings that have been basically inspired by an experience that I had um, back in 1978 when I was actually taken aboard a UFO in the Caribbean Islands. And although they aren't all inspired from that one specific experience, that was like an experience that was so powerful. It was more of a psychic experience, which means my physical body didn't actually walk into a starship. But the individuals that I met had such a profound effect on me in the sense that they were radiating this intense sunlight and they uplifted my normal lower state of consciousness, what you would say your frequency is, to a much higher level. And so when I hadn't been involved or interested in art, I'd been just a surfer, you know, basically enjoying the waves around the world the best I could, working as a carpenter. And after that experience, of course, I was always interested in consciousness. The two main elements, I think, in my uh, interests were science and consciousness. But art never had any relationship in those elements of my personality. So after that experience in the Caribbean Islands, when I got back about a month later, I decided I wanted to just, I woke up one morning. This is the way it happens a lot of times in your dream state. You'll be you know, kind of uh, given some intuitive guidance. And so I started drawing spaceships and waves. And obviously, very crude. And then I started getting a lot of different visions in my mind of things I'd like to paint, you know, almost philosophically, or things I'd like to, visions that I would like to be able to describe in a, you know, physical way of some sort. And so as I continued drawing and painting, suddenly, after about two or three years of having, you know, the frustration of not being able to really put on the canvas what I wanted because of lack of experience and knowledge, I began to be able to just kind of let it flow. So it's more of a channeling, I guess you could say, of that creative energy that I really felt in the ship. And when I was in the ship, it was like I was plugged in to some kind of intense high-frequency battery. You know, and this is pretty common for a lot of people, I think, when they have uh, psychic or transcending experiences. And so I believe it raised my frequency. And now, you know, 35 years later, I have developed an actual understanding because I've been studying and researching and, you know, finding ways to maintain that higher frequency. And I found that creativity is really one of the very best ways for me to continue to maintain that, what I would call, oscillation or that connection with not only my own creative nature, but the higher minds who visited me in that ship and who are still functioning and uh, basically contacting people as a means of helping them. So it was just a very, very wonderful, beautiful experience in the ship. And since then, I've done, I don't know, thousands of paintings. I've gotten into animation and works with the computer. Now the computer age is slow. So it's this non-going process of developing your own inner intuition to the extent that you are constantly learning, have an open mind to new ideas, and that's kind of the main aspects of the whole process. Is just, you know, science fiction is today's science fiction is tomorrow's science fact. So that's just the way it's always been, and I'm a strong believer in that. When you have this experience, what do the extraterrestrials look like, and what do you remember about the ship, and in, in particular, what stood out to you? Well, I can. Um, give you a picture, I actually have a very um, clear animation and actually a, a painting that I did of inside the ship. I don't have it with me here. But um, the ship was actually made of a crystalline material. It seemed to glow and it was kind of pulsating with this beautiful light and frequency and energy about it. And they kind of described to me that the ship is actually made of a specific type of crystalline material. And the reason that is, is because the minds of the in individuals in the craft 
can actually oscillate or connect with the vibrational rate of the ship using a generating device, which they described to me, to where the ship itself can be raised to a incredibly high frequency that is no longer subject to the laws of physics and gravity and inertia as the way that we're familiar with the way that airplanes fly or even the way that our spaceships go in, in space, that it actually travels in a different dimension and uses various types of what you would call warp drive, you could call it wormhole uh, travel. There's a lot of different methods that are still total science fiction to us. But, you know, they've basically been evolving for millions of years, so they've gotten to the point now where they're actually utilizing a technology that we simply don't have the knowledge of. And uh, we eventually may be able to, you know, get that if, if the planet itself can kind of come together to the extent that people want them to come and, and help, you know. But for the most part, uh, the planet we're living on right now has some such a primitive uh, basis still in this warring attitude and, and the various violence and the negative attributes of humanity are really the reason why this planet is in, in the shape it's in. This one's Each person really cool. has to recognize this higher consciousness within them. And that's kind yeah, of the main yeah, lesson I that I think from this entire experience is that we all have it in us. We have to be able to develop one. it. Yeah, that's ex really express it in the process of our own evolutionary uh, enlargement or expansion so that we can grow to the yeah. next level. Can you describe to me what they look like? Yeah, they were all actually um, human looking. The, the ones that I saw on the ship were long. They were probably six and a half, seven feet long. And just looked completely human other than the fact that they had this intense radiation that I noticed and this incredible frequency. And they communicated with me telepathically, which I had never really experienced that in any kind of dream state before. So that was uh, quite fascinating to say the least. Like you said, it had an aura, and like I remember seeing a painting before from you with auras around the head, and I connected that to like Renaissance, like religious artwork, right. where there's like uh, auras around their head similar. Do you think there's like a spiritual or a religious connection between what you saw or encountered and maybe like Jesus or anything like that? Well, I think what I would uh, the way I would answer that question is the paintings from the past when they would create the various halos and the various auras, whatever way you want to look at it, as angelic beings, it's people who are more sensitive could see, and that's just really a scientific process. It's the electromagnetic spectrum that that individual is manifesting because he's functioning on a much, much higher level than the average person. So you still have to be sensitive to see it, but it is something that has a scientific basis to it. It's just the fact that the frequency of that particular energy body, the psychic body of that higher being, has raised itself to such a high level that now it's literally glowing and it's radiating a light that the average person isn't really familiar with. And uh, so it has a connotation to those, those past religious paintings to some extent, only now I think we can update it into a more scientific understanding. And like human ETs, that's not really why they talk about an like, extraterrestrial community. Okay. Uh, it's more grays, it's more like reptilian or something like that. Do you think like somebody's suppressing this information? Yeah. Or, like, well, why do you think it's not as widely talked about? Um, I don't know exactly. I think that uh, maybe just the way that, you know, with the book that was written by, um, what was it? Uh, did the big black eyes and the gray. The, the glasses? That guy? What the hell is his name? Um, Strieber, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Wheatley Strieber yeah, wrote a book called um, Intruders, 
And so I think millions of people read that book. It was like the most popular book probably of all time about ETs. And so a lot of people have uh, ingrained that type of image into their minds. And a lot of these abduction experiences are related to various you know, dream experiences that people have and they kind of mishmash them around and, but it's kind of based on fear. Not that all of them aren't, you know, there aren't some legitimate uh, abductions and, and the greys, individuals like that who do exist. It could be any form that you can think of. It's just my experience, I've never had any uh, relationship to the greys or I've never seen anything or had any experience with that. So I don't think it's necessarily so much being suppressed, the experiences of these higher developed beings. I think it's more of the average person isn't really interested in recognizing that they're the source of their own problems, and that's what these higher beings are trying to relate. So in other words, take responsibility, and then you can start from there and start to, in a sense, unload all of the garbage that has created such a, a hate-filled society in which we live in. So, it, you know, it's going to be a long process, but that's kind of my take on it, and it would be, you know, ridiculous to say that it's going to be the same for any two people. Everybody's experiences are different, but I'm just coming from my own, and I've had a lot of experiences throughout the years, especially just even with just with painting, I would oftentimes get into that same state of consciousness that I talked about when I was in the ship, but now it's become a little more familiar, so it's not quite as much of a shock to me. So, you know, it's almost like the bipolar effect of your emotions is, you know, you're lifted up, kind of like what you might imagine Vincent Van Gogh, you know, he would get all absorbed in these paintings, his creativity would be flowing, so to speak, and then all of a sudden he'd come down, he'd finish the painting, and he couldn't do anything. Couldn't sell it, and so you know it was very, very. And he probably had other, you know, mental problems that were associated with that. And so he had a very difficult time in the part of himself. And his paintings, he could barely sell them. Or he hardly sold any of them. And one of them just sold for like forty million dollars, the highest ever. And so you know, when I'm dead, my paintings might be worth something. I don't know. I don't yeah. But you know, for me, it's the act of doing it and the experience I have with connecting with that creative nature and what I'm learning about myself that is important. You know, the final product, whether somebody thinks it's good or bad, whether somebody wants to pay me money for it or not. Um, luckily, I have a day job and I work as a carpenter, so I really don't care. You know, I just enjoy doing it. You have this experience. And like, what is the humanity like? The people on this world, this planet, what do like they have to evolve to or accomplish? So that, like, this is like a wild experience, and so they make contact with us on a mainstream level. Uh, something. What do you think we have to do as a society? Well, that's a um, pretty complex question, just from the fact that we have so many different cultures and religious beliefs and so many people who are really kind of living in the past, you know. So I think it's a slow process of those various masses of people kind of opening their minds to something that at this point in time seems very fearful to them. I mean, everybody's terrified of dying, but if they can put this, you know, white book Santa Claus in the sky concept into it, and that this God's going to help them are good in the sense of what their religious teachings are, and you know, they can go to hell, yeah. and you know, go to hell. So it's this tremendous fear that uh, motivates people. So it's like they have to begin to open their minds, overcome this fear, and see that there's a much larger picture to uh, perceive and to, in a sense, open the the. Um, parameters of their mind to encompass a larger reality, a larger picture. And with that, they will continue to evolve and eventually I believe we will have that type of contact. Thank you very much. You bet, thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.